This is NASA's space power facility near Cleveland, Ohio, and it is the world's biggest vacuum chamber. It's used to test spacecraft in the conditions of outer space, and it does that by pumping out the 30 tons of air in this chamber until there are about two grams left. And it's kind of got an eccentric construction, which is part of its history. It was built in the 1960s as a nuclear test facility to test nuclear propulsion systems. And that meant that they built it out of aluminium to make the radiation easier to deal with. Aluminium is not the best thing, the strongest material to build a vacuum chamber out of. So they built an outer concrete skin, which is part radiation shielding and part an external pressure vessel. So this thing can take the force that's present on the outside when it's pumped out to the conditions of outer space. Galileo's experiment was simple. He took a heavy object and a light one and drop them at the same time to see which fell fastest. Now in this case, the feathers fell to the ground at a slower rate than the bowling ball because of air resistance. So, in order to see the true nature of gravity, we have to remove the air. It takes three hours to pump out the 800,000 cubic feet of air from the chamber. Okay, we dropped two millitor in the last 30 minutes. But once it's complete, there's a near perfect vacuum inside. 6104 manual, 10% open. Station one, go for drop. PCB 30-1, pressure set point at 240 PSI. We are go for drop. 10, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, cameras on, two, one, release. <laughs> look at exactly. that. They came down exactly the same. Wow. Look, look, look. Watch right there. Look at how they hit right there. <laughs> exactly. You're back on the side. Look, exactly the same. Oh, feathers don't move. Nothing. Look at that. That's just brilliant. Isaac Newton would say that the ball and the feather fall because there's a force pulling them down gravity. But Einstein imagined the scene very differently. The happiest thought of his life was this. The reason the bowling ball and the feather fall together is because they're not falling. They're standing still. There is no force acting on them at all. He reasoned that if you couldn't see the background, there'd be no way of knowing that the ball and the feathers were being accelerated towards the Earth. So he concluded they weren't.